did really well. Well, well, thank you. I'm not really sure how I ended up with this job and I'll be speaking to my mob back in um, the far western New South Wales region when I um, get out there next Wednesday. Um, I'd like to acknowledge um, this fantastic Eora Nation and acknowledge the Gadigal people and um, pay my respects to Elders both past and present and extend that respect to all of you here today. Sydney really is a beautiful city, it's just absolutely stunning and, um, and I love that I can come to um, such a big foreign place and still feel this really strong sense of connection and still feel, um, I can still feel old grandfather Jimmy Keewong that we got to connect with through this project while I'm standing here talking to you um, and it's absolutely beautiful. We did have a little experience in the cab coming over here tonight and we of course got lost coming to the city, you know, Bushy's driving to the city and so we got lost, you know, and, and had a bit of a journey but then we thought, okay, well we'll cab it down here and we got in the cab and the cabbie said, no, look, you know, you've, you've five, you know, it's just down here on the corner, you're really, really close, so... Um, get out and walk, you know, and so we went to get out and thought he was kicking us out, and but he still made us pay five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but then we, when we walked around the corner, we realised we were very, we thought we were very clear that we wanted the Jewish Museum, and when we ran around the corner, um, it was the Australian Museum, and we said, <laughs> we, and we thought we were really clear, and then we started to reflect on what that might mean, and um, and I think Linda Burney might remember a night um, when we were in, um, here in Sydney and one of our elders from Redfern couldn't get a cab um, because it was night, you know, and she was too black to catch a cab. <laughs> so we have no idea what the cabbie's story was, except we think we got kicked out of the cab because we asked to come to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hope, let's hope not. So Yamagata, which is... A Nyampa word that we didn't actually know before we um, started this um, long project that is actually still going. One of the things that this project has done, it's connected a whole lot of us um, exiled blackfellas from far western New South Wales who didn't know a lot about who our fathers. I have, um, my matrilineal country is Matawinji and we grew up with really close connections to my grandmother's country. So that was pretty easy, but we just knew that, that our dad was from around Ivanhoe and, you know, we didn't know much else about that. But through this Rona Tramby Trust, we actually, the Trust funded our camps back out to country. It's a story particularly focused around Aunt Eliza Kennedy, um, a very, very funny Nyampa woman who tells wicked, horrendous stories. Um, and that, that crack and good sense of humour that has meant that we've been able to survive, you know, like, like the Jewish community, we've been able to survive some of the most amazing atrocities um, because of that, our ability to laugh. Um, when we got back to go back out into country, it was really interesting because initially it was just all the old people's stories, but when we got to go back to country, we got to see how beautiful our country was. Um, and people started to say, the younger generation started to say things like, this reminds me of. And, and so one of our non-Indigenous friends who, I think it's really important when you work on these projects that we are supported by a whole lot of people with a whole lot of skills. Um, so I absolutely don't subscribe to that, you know, um, it needs to be just Indigenous business because I think that for this project, our non-Indigenous friends have been the people who've been hanging in there, keeping it going along. And Karen Donaldson um, is the oral historian who's been pumping this along and Jennifer's had many, many conversations with Karen and a whole lot of us. And Peter Thompson um, is an archaeologist by trade. Um, and they have been incredibly instrumental in, in keeping this project moving along. The, the ability of the old people um, to be able to laugh and tell stories, the, we didn't know anything about our non-Indigenous um, families. And I had a guy once who said to me, um, um, are you going to talk about your non-Indigenous self? And I rang Karen in Morkania and I said, Karen, I've just asked, been asked this question. And she said, well, you don't really have one. 
And and through this story, we got to learn every one of the old people had a photo of old grandfather Dave Harris, who was an Irishman, on their wall. And, and they all talked so respectfully. Yes, I have no hope at all. Blackfella and Irish, you know. <laughs> um, and, and they just spoke about this man with such incredible honour. Um, and, and one of the photos in the book that we are um, in the process of publishing when we, you know, when we um, get some money to publish it um, is, is of Auntie Liza holding this photo of this old Irishman and she said he stopped all the kids out there getting taken away. He taught them how to grow market veggies. She talks about ration clothes and all those things that were pretty awful. And she said he was the one that also, not only he married his, his, he married his new her wife, which in that day and age was pretty unusual, um, but when her sister's husband deserted um, the sister and left the sister with nine kids, you know, out in the middle of sort of Ivanhoe Cobo, you imagine it would have been pretty amazing. He also looked after those kids. Um, so we got to know about our non-Indigenous selves as well. So. You know, we've also been able to track where he's come, he came from in Ireland and in a whole lot of other stuff. So I actually am so grateful to the Raina Tramby Trust that we know so much more about who we are. Um, and it's meant so much to my father as he gets older and older, just knowing who he is and where he comes from, what, you know, what our, um, we are as a person. Why does the Raina Tramby Trust matter? Why does the work of the Trust matter? It matters because it matters to the next generation of young people. This is the work that can help connect and orientate young people and for young people to know what it means to be good individuals and what it means to be a good citizen of the world. So I've worked in Aboriginal education for many years like Linda and Daryl and a whole lot of people in this room and I haven't worked on anything more important than this work. This work is critical. The stories of the old people, young people knowing who they are, where they come from because if we don't give it to them they replace it with something else and they usually replace that with popular culture so you know we all know that's often about disrespecting women and drugs and all sorts of things so these stories matter because they're Australian stories they're indigenous Australian stories the language matters the culture matters the history matters the heritage heritage matters it not only matters to us as indigenous Australians but it matters to all Australians so I think that, you know, if we can continue the work of the Trust, it has made an incredible difference in my life. I know it's made an incredible difference. I will, we won't even be going to count up the number of people that we've lost throughout this project. We all know that our communities out bush, you know, really struggle. Um, I think the life expectancy rate is in Morcana is something like, because it's gone up to about 34, Victor. It's just still pretty horrendous. So. You know, this work is just incredibly important. The work of the Trust is incredibly important. Um, so I just, you know, thank you so much, Jennifer, because what you've done for my family and for my daughters and my extended family and my father um, and the, you know, the, there are just so many people out there in the bush, you know, those lovely red dirt roads that, you know, get in your ball bearings and you get bold when it rains and, and all those things that you just love about the outback, these are incredible stories that are just so rich and so important. And celebrating the strength and resilience of the old people is really important. They survived far more than I could ever survive. So it's really important. The oral histories really matter because when young people come up against tough times, they have to be able to think back and they have to be able to anchor back to something. And if they can anchor back to the stories of the old people, then they realise that they haven't actually got it too bad. So I'd just like to say thank you and I'm really honoured to be here tonight and on behalf of the editorial team that con me to come here tonight, um, <laughs> I am, um, they are truly, truly grateful and this um, project has meant so much to so many people. Thank you. <laughs>